Today we're speaking with Reverend Dr. Ed Ziders, who is the chairperson for the Conference Commission on Child Advocacy. Thank you for speaking with well, us. Well, it's my joy, Brittany. It's good to see you. We've been wanting to get together to yes. chat about this for quite a while now, and I'm thankful that we can. So can you explain to our viewers and to me, what is mm. the role and the mission of the Commission on Child Advocacy? Oh, thank you very much. Well, I'm excited to be here and to celebrate the Commission's life and work. This has been a passion for me for many years. And when it came possible for me to lead the commission, I was excited to work with Bishop Middleton about that and to jumpstart what had been laying fallow for a little while. The commission has been charged uh, by the annual conference to discover the well-being of Pennsylvania's children, especially inside the boundaries of our expanded now annual conference. Mm -hmm. So within the seven districts, we've been doing research over many years now to discover what is it like for children birth through and young people 18, what is it like for them in the Commonwealth and inside the boundaries of the annual conference. Essentially, the commission is looking at an, an audience different than the local church's normal children and youth ministries programs. So the commission has a task to inquire, to do the research, to discover demographically and from persons we interview and persons who participate in the listening posts, what they are learning about Pennsylvania's kids. So the most recent demographic that I'm really concerned about is that 673,000 children birth through 18 are living at risk in Pennsylvania. And what does that mean, living at risk? The, the Commonwealth has a set of standards by which they measure this at-risk lifestyle or set of circumstances. The first one, or among the first one, is poverty and the health-related issues that attend to poverty and the family's circumstances. Mm -hmm. When we explore that, especially with those medical persons who are related to the Commission, they're telling us all kinds of stories and tales about how they see kids in crisis. Mm. The same thing is true on the legal side. Judges tell us about adjudicating young people as early as birth through 10 or 11 years old, mostly 9, 10, 11 year olds, who are now being adjudicated by the state's court systems. These are kids who are participating in violent activities who are themselves abused by others. So poverty, financial circumstances, under education, poor health conditions, acting out in violence, victims of sexual assault and abuse. And what we, what we read and see all the time now is young people who are committing crimes that are more and more serious for the state courts. Mm -hmm. One that comes to my mind is that a lot of young people are struggling with depression, Indeed. it seems, right now. Mm -hmm. um, what is a way that, or what has the commission found in its research with that? We get our, most of our research with, from public agencies and from school systems. The state demographics cover a host of things like that and many, many categories. But the issues of mental health and depression among young people certainly have to be growing and there's a mm -hmm. concern among medical professionals for how they're gonna treat those kids. The danger is over medication, dysfunction, alienation, despair, giving up, suicide. Those kind of things the commission knows about. Mm -hmm. So our goals are try to address what are the condition of these kids around our congregations, around our networks of congregations, we generally call those clusters, and how can people be mobilized to understand their circumstances and then act to address it. What do you do with this research that you gather across Pennsylvania? We've been doing listening posts for a while. Some of them are formal, some of them are informal. So my work as chair is to introduce the commission itself to opportunities for formal listening posts. The next one is January the 8th at Camp Hill United Methodist Church. So we bring together, uh, at, by invitation, we've sent out 630 invitations oh, wow. to participate in this listening post at Camp Hill. How do you select people? 
Well, we just borrow from everybody's insights. Okay. Public health workers, agency heads, okay. uh, the legal hospital, wherever we so can So you reach. are specifically targeting people not necessarily within the church? Uh, we're targeting youth okay. workers, children's workers, pastors, associates, all kinds of people who are leading congregations okay. to try to bring the public and private sector into the life of the church and to network those people in the same room at the same time. Mm-hmm. We have a real concern about why we do this in the first place. We want to get the story straight. What is the condition of the kids around our congregations? Urban, suburban, rural, and really isolated places of clear poverty and suffering. Mm -hmm. And there are those pockets of things are all over central Pennsylvania. We know that. We've seen that. We've been there. Mm -hmm. When we get the listening post folks together, first a keynote address someone in the field who understands the implications of domestic violence or abuse or assault or education or the adjudication of young people. So the keynote address heightens our consciousness to what the world is really like around us. Mm -hmm. No room for naivete here. Then a panel of experts follows and responds to the keynote address. School superintendents, high school principals, physicians, those who have been themselves victim of violence caseworkers who are face to face with these kids and their families. Mm -hmm. So we hear the keynote and then the panel addresses those concerns on the ground and reveal to us what it's like where they work and live. All of this is for the purpose of heightening the awareness of the participants in the listening post. At the same time, there's a process inside the listening post for those persons who are in congregations to report what are they seeing? when they see kids who are dysfunctional? What happens when a child who is a victim of abuse comes into the youth group? Mm. What about those who are dysfunctional because of disabilities? Mm -hmm. And how do we care for those inside the life of existing congregations? That's an arena for discovery around which I know something personally with my own family. The critical question then is how do we build the networks between the professionals, congregants who may not be professionals, but who are passionate about this work. Mm -hmm. The commission makes it possible. Here is the demographic data. Here are the people who are at work all the time, many of whom are Christians anyway, who are out there doing this work as a form of their discipleship. And to build those partnerships and then to form local communities of advocates who can participate in legislative work on the one hand, who can get comfortable with county planners, who can talk to agency executives about their particular work and what the needs are, especially to talk to judges who see the dark side of this all of the time. Mm -hmm. So this is a full day of dialogue and learning and setting expectations. Well, it sounds uh, like the commission really gathers a lot of research mm-hmm. that is helpful for the people yes. that can implement programs or that can help them to yes. understand um, all of these issues that children and youth are dealing with. We have a specialist who works with the commission, actually, uh, and she does the demographic work for us. We have more than 60 websites that we research. Oh. And in two states. Okay. So we're looking at our border state, Maryland, for Southern York County because a lot of our people live in Maryland and cross over and vice versa Mm -hmm. to work and to understand the context within which local churches are working and functioning. It's a very exciting enterprise. It's exceedingly hard work and it's not necessarily popular work. Mm -hmm. There's no way to deal with kids and their families on the margins without their lives rubbing off on us. Mm -hmm. It's like when you pull a pot the potter gets clay all over himself or herself. That's what this is like. Their lives start to spill over into our hearts and minds. There's a chance for mission and ministry to happen. Well, I thank you for coming and sharing about child advocacy so that we can understand and so that it can be on our minds that, you know, Mm -hmm. there are children and youth out there um, that don't have such a comfortable living situation. So I thank you for bringing that to light. It's my pleasure. And in a unique way, it's a joy if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's a calling for me and I'm enthusiastic about our work. 
If you would like to learn more about child advocacy, you can check out my Facebook page at Susquehanna Express. <laughs>